first idea, right? The theme. Um, I'm 44 years old, seen a lot of uh, stuff going on in my life. Uh, 99, 2000, well, way back earlier, you know, Y2K was an event that created a software SME business, right? There was Infosys, there was these other guys doing big stuff, but the Y2K problem created an industry. If you look at Zynga, it, Facebook created that industry. Uh, you know, I remember uh, Peter Relan, the guy who built Crowdstar, and he told, he told a conference once that, when I saw the iPhone, I told my people, take this seriously. And then, you know, everything happened. Let's say Angry Birds came out of this. Gondal himself, right? I mean, way back 97, 98, 99, games company out of Java, smart, you know, legacy handsets. So question to you guys is, you know, we're in the brink of 2014. We've seen it all, done it all. There are four players. What do you, is there something you're seeing on the horizon that you're saying this could change or bring about another gaming revolution? Our focus is more on the economy of the game, how you structure the economy. Yes, so we hired the guys from Russia and they know how the structure of the economy, like if you remember the previous discussion was about airport tycoon. And airport, this airport city game, actually it was designed in three years in Russia by four developers and 80% was server. So long story you're saying, your future says, let me change the gross, the, the revenue mechanics of a game. That's the future of what you think, right? Or oh, whatever, great. Okay. Uh, you know, the platforms are going to keep changing. Like App Store came in probably three to four years back and it revolutioned the whole uh, game industry. Uh, before that, it was more about smartphones right. and feature phones. So probably you need to check out what could be redefining in the next five years. Would it be wearable technology like Google Glass? Awesome. Uh, Right. Uh, you know, smart watches, we're already seeing uh, Temple Run running on uh, Galaxy Gear. Right, perfect. And, yes, you uh, mentioned that, yes. Yeah. And then even Glue released a, a game for Google Glass. Right. And right. Uh, yesterday itself. Right. So we need to look into those technologies also, you know, what could be the future right. uh, moving on from mobile. Michelle, I mean, you have lots of, I but just wanted to say this whole TV thing, right? We've been talking about the smart TV for a long time. And I, you know, you play Clash of Clans, you can't see anything on the iPhone. But then you realize that you see it on a, on a screen, you see everything. So is a large, you know, the really high design now saying that who's going to play on this screen? Is just the device to portray on a large screen? So I, th I think before I take this question, I just wanted to kind of add to what Virat was saying. I think the bigger question we all need to ask ourselves is that whether you want to be the small fish in a big pond or a big fish in a small pond. I think that's really where your strategy has to determine. So yes, you won't find Indian companies in top grossing in the US, but is that what you want to do or rather focus in a market where you could be the top grocer, even though the market may be smaller, but you dominate that market. And I think that's really uh, the strategy at least, uh, which, yeah. was, which was kind of, which in a way kind of works. And if you kind of draw parallels with the movie business in India, which is the closest entertainment business you can compare gaming to. I mean, Shah Rukh Khan is not saying that he wants to compete with Brad Pitt, you know. Uh, the movie business in India is unique. They're not going to Russians to make stories for us. The, uh, but Vishal, sorry, the difference is that if you look at the App Store ranks, right, today in India, iOS and Android, the top ranks are still global games. Now, the top box office it's in India box are Bollywood movies. So that's the difference. We would very happily make Bollywood type games if the consumption was Bollywood. So you are differentiating between quality of content and uh, the taste, local taste. So no, quality, I'm saying, has to be the best. I'm not trying to say quality needs to be compromised, but uh, Dhoom has a much more resonant with the Indian users uh, than, you know, but, uh, need for speed but, for that. Well, I agree, yeah, please, but isn't the rank the people's choice? Oh, how can I tell them what they want? Yeah. Can I say yeah. something here? So I think, uh, I think what then we need to build is, is a platform that is India-centric where you have only India products that are being, being shown but and then who's you build it's, it's like because saying Rummy and poker. Yeah. So is yeah, Rummy making more money or poker making more money? Well, in India, Rummy obviously, right? Because why, poker, why is poker uh, there are better but, poker games but in if you look at world. Rhymes, so why is uh, poker not making If you look you know at the point… There, there are 600 million iOS devices worldwide. But in India, there are probably a handful of million devices. So we're looking at what what is the market size of India and whether they can India get has that a billion revenue. people with 800 yeah. million phones. But, but and why are you focusing I, on Apple, which I don't right. know who uses yeah. here. Yeah. So I think uh, we're all agreeing that, so we have a very nice difference of opinion, which is awesome, thankfully. Uh, long story is, you, do you want to add something to this or you've kind of made your point? In, okay. So let's agree to disagree that 
you know, whether it's device or whether it's country or geography, uh, gaming definitely doesn't seem to be going out of fashion soon. And, you know, we can at least look forward to using all our minds to do something that is either India, Bollywood, not Bollywood, but Indian taste centric. At the end of the day, it has to be either downloaded or paid for or get grossing. And I think that challenge also, it remains at the next layer, right? Um, so let me flip that, uh, that, that thought and say that uh, I, had a very in, I, had a, I heard a very interesting comment that my wife told me last week. She said that, uh, Alok, I was speaking to your mom, she calls her mummy, and she said, mummy told me that I've told my dad, that's my, my, uh, my you know, ba papa, that ab main khali, I'm going to only play Candy Crush for 30 minutes. She said, I've promised him that I'm not going to play Candy Crush for more than 30 minutes. Now, that's my mom, okay? And my mom is like freaking out on Candy Crush and they're having a fight at home. How much Candy Crush is she playing? Now, you, you know, take a time machine back 20 years and the guys who were playing games are these geeky kids on their tummies in, school, in, in, you know, in front of TVs that we would see on, on, um, in Hollywood movies. So that, what, what I call democratization of game is, right? Everybody's playing a game. Gondal talked about the pand Pujari and the Pandit playing games long back. As, a, as an entrepreneur involved in game businesses, how do you see that? Is it a threat? Is it a, you know, all the taporis of the world are now going to make games? Or is it an opportunity which says different strokes for different folks? I think I'll go to the 1970s with the console industry, everyone making a new console and pushing a console. The same, we are going through a phase where everyone thinks that he can make games. Okay. Sooner or later, it's going to have again top, top players taking the position, taking the bet. Then again, a new thing will evolve, a Google Glass will come, again we all will run for it. Again, something new. So this is going to be an endless process. I think the question is, you know, if you look at uh, uh, Sade Godin, uh, head of, you know, king of marketing, made a very interesting observation once. He said, look at the number one top US song hit. It never is repeated. So the philosophy or the thesis is that if games are going to become creative expressions, everybody can doodle, everybody can make a game, and therefore 14-year-old kids to 40-year-old men will make games that will become a one-day star. Because of the app store, democratization, who cares? I want to play something new every day. It's like YouTube. Then what do you do? Then why, uh, why are we businessmen? Why are we in entrepreneurship? We should just be amateur or hobby gamers, putting it up there and having fun. Like you can have a number one free app, you know, as you said, one app every day. But it's very difficult to be a top grossing app for a, you know, uh, you know for a prolonged period Agreed. of time. So that should be the goal, you know, to come okay. in top grossing rather than number free app, where right. then your model is different, of course. I mean, sure. And, yeah. and my point is that instead of trying to say I want to build a top grossing app, why are we not saying that I want to build a games company? Because the problem is you can't build a company on the top of one app and we've seen that you know, with, uh, you know, whether it is Zynga, whether it is, uh, you know, even Everybody. Angry Birds is getting angrier now. Yeah. Uh, you know, so the birds are no longer funny. So the point is that it is not about building the one app which becomes top grossing. It's about figuring out how can you create an organization which is about building multiple IPs, which is about sustaining the revenue and growing because that's what people want to see. Makes sense. And, yeah. and I think when you, and I agree with Vishal completely, if you, if you, build something that's good once, then when you build other titles, people are going to come back to you because you, they hold that, that impression of you that you are a good quality producer of, of games. You know, everything is subjective, right? Lucas built Star Wars. That's it. I mean, even God wants to see the next sequel yeah, of Star then Wars. Star, but then Star Wars went on for a while, right? Yeah. I mean, it did become top grossing in that so sense. He did, the title versus yeah. legacy. I mean, I mean, they could not build anything beyond but Star Wars. Yeah, but that is the, that is the point, right? I mean, the biggest hit was Star Wars, Wars man. But it's and Star now, Wars. You <laughs> know, I mean, exactly. <laughs> and now they had to sell it to Disney, right? At the end of the day, so <laughs> he's dying, man. He's got to go on. He's got the brand in a better hand. But I think it's more like a assembly type of a model. You make a factory. Oh my God! And an idea becomes That's a commodity. That's the last thing I want to hear on a games panel. Idea, yeah. idea becomes a commodity. Yeah, I made Moza, but I made socks for 14, 10 years of my life. That is an assembly business. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, Let's it's, not go there at least. No, it is. It is actually going th th okay. in that direction. So the question is, is there a view that investors can take that I want to create gaming in India? I want to create entertainment gaming, not just gaming, and therefore I'm going to put 20 million dollars to work. And I'm going to give it to, say, two people, three people, and then there'll be 20 more like that. Um, I mean, 
do you all see that conversation? I mean, uh, you know, Alex is like one of those animals, Lee is like one of those animals who thinks like that, right? So does he tell you that, take 100 crores and blow it up? So, um, Tiger Global does do that. I don't yeah. think there are investors in India who are… Uh, Who cares about India, man? I mean, why are we talking about India? So because it's very… So, first of all… Right, but you got Tiger, right, in your company. I, yes, so, we yeah. were… Because one of our investors was, um, you know, knew someone at Tiger and that's how we um, we, we got there. But And that's the point I'm making that… Um, it's not very straightforward for an entrepreneur, a first generation entrepreneur to reach out to the, the global or the foreign uh, VC firms and talk to them and, and get their interest because there are enough out there who are already vying for their attention. So they have to start with India. And in India, the mindset of, of you know, how we invest is very, very different. Very good point. What about you guys? I mean, you you're already, anybody, have you all been raising money or looking at raising money? Or what do VCs tell you when you go to them saying I have a games company? I think uh, if if you t see from the bigger picture, like we got a Series A, the organizational priorities as well as the VC priorities also change and they understand how things evolve. I think the centerpiece is what is per download a company is making. That is the centerpiece. The if, VC asks that? Yes, we work on that okay, whoa. every day. Wow, so, man. Okay. So how much money you make per download, okay. that is going to decide how, how, how much money you want to put for the advertising. And how much money you are going to put for the advertising is going to decide are you going to survive or not. So simple, that, that ROI is still not there. So I think we should introduce your VC to Masayoshi Son who just bought 51% in, uh, you know, Supercell and I think his view of gaming is a little more different than uh, per download. But uh, the takeaway I guess is that VCs are not completely aware of the enormity of this business or maybe in India or maybe as I like to say, sometimes they know more than we do. And I, think, I think VCs need to start playing games, I think, as a, as a start. And, you know, it's so funny that I have so many VCs calling me and using e-commerce metrics yeah. and trying to put it on game companies. You know, what is the cost per acquisition? What is the yield? I said, you know, I mean, they, they again are going back to this whole point of instead of trying to see how big a brand are you building? Is this an IP? Are you having awesome. enough distribution? They're all getting into the unit economics of things, yeah. which is just too premature right now at this stage when you're building a company. Perfect. Many what? people think, you know, from the outside, it's a hit or a miss business, right? If you have a hit title, you know, it's more about luck, it's not about talent, but it's actually, you know, you, know, you need 10 bad titles to create a good hit title and it's about the team that so, needs to be invested so in. So just what we were talking just upstairs, right, just to reiterate to the audience, uh, Vishal, thanks for correcting me. I mean, um, Angry Birds was the 47th title of Rovio and they had spent, there's a 19, I think a 2004 company. So they spent 10 years before they got Angry Birds. Uh, Supercell was XXX, we've been 15 years in the business. So. One of the takeouts we had privately is that it takes 15 years to do something substantial, irrespective of whether it's a game or a e-com or a, a brand, right? So there ain't no easy luck coming your way if you're just a games company. Yeah, it's not about you know, just starting out to make a million bucks, you start a game company to make a million bucks. Yeah. It's, it's There's no harm in that. What's, what's yeah, wrong? But it's I mean, difficult. As a Marwadi, I like that idea. <laughs> yeah, but right? it's difficult. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about something that really pains us all, right? I mean, how do you get people in India to work for you? who are talented uh, in a games company? So three questions. People in India who are talented and who want to join a games company. I'm not even talking about salary I'm, expectation, right? I'm not that comes that later. Question. I'm not <laughs> taking that question. <laughs> um, I mean, Vishal, you built the largest game force or team force. So I think we would have hired uh, in the last whatever 10 odd years over a thousand people in and out. Sure. Uh, and very frankly, I don't think so. Talent is the problem. Right. I think the challenge was mentoring these people, giving them the right exposure, uh, sending your actual teams to GDC and not some business development executive. Awesome. Uh, so I think the, the part of the problem was that we were not, uh, or most companies don't spend enough time and money developing their manpower or developing their, uh, their users or their developers into exposing them to stuff. So I remember with the, at, the, uh, at the NASCOM GDC, uh, I think from India Games, we sent over a hundred people wow. to attend the conference. Over a hundred people. I don't know what happened now, but, uh, but, but that's the kind of commitment we had in making sure people were exposed to talent. The other thing is most of the technologies we are dealing with is only two years old. You know, so or Android or iOS itself is three years old. So it's not that 
in the US, uh, there are people with a lot of talent. In fact, Excellent. the biggest problem they have is that, oh shit, people are, you know, people are joining Twitter and people are joining Facebook. So their challenge is that how do you get the best engineers in the valley or wherever you are when you are competing with all these companies? Excellent so point. They have a bigger problem than us. Uh, I remember two years back, I called up Gondal and I said, uh, Vishal, I want to hire this guy in the US to work for us because I feel, you know, I have this inferiority complex that we don't know how to make games in India. And the first thing he told me is that, Alok, do not hire. Do not hire. He said, he's told me to not do things which I've ignored, but this was do not hire. And he gave me an example of someone he had and fired. And, uh, you know, we hired, I hired, and I fired. And I burnt uh, almost $200,000 in the bargain. So, Crore went up in flames just because I didn't take that advice. And that guy knew Jack. So, in the end, we figured out we knew more than him. So, um, it's not easy to get talent in gaming as a concept. Forget whether it's... Um, yeah, I think that's... Uh, any. So, can we ask anybody who has a question, just break from this. We can keep going on and on. But uh, anybody with any rousing question, any ideas, anything, any thoughts? Uh, what I'll probably do is, if you don't, with your permission, I'll just also just introduce a larger concept of gamification, if you don't mind, and just probably use that as a metaphor to go to the next five, seven minutes or whatever we have. Yeah, I, I actually presented this. I have a small deck. Um, it's not. It's not a pitch. Don't worry. Uh, I can just show you all what I think is interesting from a gamification point of view, and I'll also bring Vishal into that after the PPT because I think he's taking his knowledge of 15 years of games into another realm and. I know you don't want to talk about it, but you can still give us a direction. So Vishal, you know, you've understood gamification long back. And, you know, you're now a venture capitalist. Uh, sweat, blood, Not a venture, venture sweat, capitalist. sweat, blood and tears. <laughs> How seriously are you taking this uh, thought in terms of, you know, what you were showing me outside? Just applying the rules of games to startups and what businesses are going to become. So I think the first point is that uh, what is a game itself is changing, the definition of what is a game. I think previously it was all about it has to be a game on a, it started with the console, started with, you know, then being on your PC, then, con you know, and now it is on, on your mobile phone. And I think the, uh, the bigger concept really is that how can you make your life into a game and various elements of that. And that brings me back to another point which uh, which goes to what means makes a world class game if you go to japan the number one games over there tend to be what they call card battle games cbg because in japan there is a huge culture of tamagotchi and cards and you know this was what people did in life in general and that is got that is what got translated into games and there are no pro prior points for guessing why call of duty is the best game in america because Everybody loves <laughs> shooting there, right? So, uh, the question really is that in India, I believe driving a car is actually like playing a game. You know, <laughs> if you're in the streets yeah. of Mumbai or anywhere, yeah. uh, I can bet you that our taxi drivers and, you know, our rickshaw drivers have the, if they are actually given to play a real game, they will have better reflexes. NFS or something. Everything, yeah. right? Because you are playing a real world game. And uh, crossing a road, you know, that's, that's a, a, a pretty cool game. And uh, if you have played Subway Surfers uh, and go to the Mumbai station or any railway station, you can see people actually playing real Subway Surfer over here. So the question really is, instead of trying to make these people play Subway Surfers on their phones, uh, how cool it be, will it be to really figure out how can we help them <laughs> by not killing themselves? So I think uh, that's the broader concept. And I think once again, as I said, you have to think in the future. No. The problem is that most people here are thinking about the past. I mean, apps and Java and all this is gone. So if you are in this conference discussing top grossing and freemium and all of that, according to me, you're already a dinosaur. Vishal Gondal has officially dismissed this panel, right? We're dead. You're already a dinosaur, right? I mean, if you talk about world-class games, you need to be thinking the next, what is the next wave and not the wave in the past. This wave is already in cash. Yes. Companies have so, gone public. That's so, you know, PCs, all your money is bl got blown up so, already. So there were two. So when we were growing up, when I say growing up uh, in the in 99, 2000 phase, you know, there was a famous line that went, "VAP is crap," right? And now I'm saying, "VAS is gas," because VAS is over. I mean, anybody sitting here and thinking of making a lifeline out of VAS, better join uh, Mother Teresa. 
So if you're saying thematically those businesses are gone and you're you've nicely I'm saying app stores are also crap Chalo stores. Bhai hama. <laughs> so we're all gone. I don't know what we're going to do in our lives. But uh, I want to point to the stuff that you are. I mean, I know you've got lots of bands up your body. I can see one at least. Uh, this whole Fitbit, the whole measurable device uh, beyond you guys. Are you all wearing any bands and any of these things? What are you doing? Are you measuring uh, the number of hair on your bo on your scalp and the number of times you dig your nose and how much things are you measuring and gamifying it? Anybody? How many times you piss and you know there could be a yeah. game on, on uh, while, while you're pissing also. So I saw a pitch by a VC, a very, very big uh, presentation on a big cloud, on a cloud data uh, panel where they said that there's a very big farm in New Zealand that actually measures the, uh, that calibrates the quality of a cow's piss and then figures out when the cow is pregnant and it helps them move the cows in the right manner. So, um, no, but Rami, right? the concept of gambling, w why can't you apply that to other things in life? You most certainly can. Right. Um, there is there is no reason why you can't. Um, and I'm, and there are people out there doing it. It's just, again, it comes, comes back to visibility, right? How much are those people able to grow or how much are they able to, um, you know, advertise themselves or market themselves to get out there and, and create that buzzword. And for all that, you need funding. So it all comes down to, you know, um, how we can get more and more people here in this audience to really, really fund these groups and, and, and you know, make them go out there and, and, and do their thing. You know, give them this money that you were talking about here. Flipkart, Tiger gives Flipkart so much money, go out there and do it. It'll all come back you to that because you need money. Is required it's still for all about fund. No, man, you're missing yes. the point. I think the... Okay, so let's, 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 let's rest this about saying, my gut tells me that in the next 20 years, the CEOs of some of the largest organizations will be people who will really understand gamification. Because not, nothing less than the core mechanics of a game is what's going to take away this, right? You can't afford advertising anymore. Advertising but is dead. I'll go back to Vishal's point and say that in 20 years, they understand that they've already missed the boat. They've become dinosaurs by then because then there'll be something else after that. You have to understand it now based on what you're saying, not 20 years later. All I can tell you is he's the perfect guy to raise money from Tiger <laughs> because he keeps telling me need more money, <laughs> right? Uh, just, a, just a breakout, just to explain to you why I call it, you know, why I'm so intrigued by this concept and at least why I'm building a career for myself more from a gamification point of view is that Rolls-Royce, I mean, all the airplanes in the world, most of them are powered by Rolls-Royce engines and Pratt and & Whitney. Now, here's the fun part, right? In the future, very soon future, Rolls-Royce used to sell its engine as a component. Take it and put it in your plane. Now, they're selling it as RPM. So, they're measuring the RPMs of a, of a motor, of a engine, and they're going to sell it to airlines basis usage. And it's all because they can measure what that engine has done. So, you know, what you were showing me, the blood testing part and the habit forming part, um, I think there's a lot that we can do in... Guys out there, you know, if you have some kind of gaming exposure, whether it's private company, whether it's an entrepreneur, whether it's a developer, I would say broadly also think beyond the fact of the next Java or the Android game because you never know. You might be sitting on a skill that might become very valuable as you go along. That's, that's the meta thought. Um, you know, I think we've got about a few minutes left. Anybody again, audience questions? Please help us. Anybody? I think we're the best audience, best best panel in the house. Here. We've swooned everybody. Yeah, please. You can shout at yeah, the sound booth. Uh, my question is for Vishal. Uh, and you just uh, hi, my name is Ali, and you just said that VAS and all the stores are all uh, you know talk of the past. They're all crap. So how do you how do you expect the user to then uh, engage and you know get to all these games and stuff? Because the last panel. What I'm saying is users are already engaged and they already have the games and. You know, ask but, a user. But how do, you, how do you find an app? If, it's, if there are no app stores, then how do you Billions find Billions of people finding the app already. I but mean, isn't that, that problem just is already the, solved. Isn't, that just, isn't yeah. that just you're talking about the tip of the iceberg? Because then uh, if you're talking about India, there's a large chunk of people and we're also talking... So let's... There are two questions here. Are people downloading and playing games? And are they downloading and playing your game? Okay, <laughs> there are two questions. Here. Are they downloading anybody with a, with a smartphone? is downloading and playing games. I can give it to you in writing. You know, ask Eddie right from the rickshaw driver and the first thing they do when they get an Android phone or now a Nokia, whatever phone, is they're downloading uh, it. Not really. So, I have, I'll argue with I'll tell you what they do first, but we'll talk okay. about that later, right? Second thing. Yeah. So, the problem is that that is already 
I think the problem of discovery and all that was a two, three, four year old problem, which is now pretty much sorted out. And most, o most OEMs have sorted that problem out. So the second problem is how can your game compete and be number one? And I'm saying that's going to be very tough. There's a phenomenal it's discussion, right? I will, I will explain. Uh, I think Vishal is going in the direction I can understand a little bit. He's saying you create a scalar system, let the people fight, like what the Apple creates or the Android creates. Let the people fight as a vector. They put their creativity, like people like us fighting that we want to be top on the page on the App Store. And those people are smiling there, sitting. So this is what Vishal says. So you create that platform which is be below everything and then automatically everything will evolve around it. I'm not it. saying create a platform. No, I'm Every, not saying. A system so in which the I'm people… I'm saying think of the next, next thing. Where people apply their so let, creativity. Let me, let, me, let me distill this, right? Between your, I think, great question and Vishal's prophetic vision of what will happen. Good point. Uh, I think why… I told you so. Why reality? Let, let's, let's focus on this. Very important part. We got five minutes back on the marketing of games, right? Let's bring it up as the future because if you're going to build a world class gaming product from India, then we better know, understand what marketing really is. And I would argue that the, fa the sentence marketing is spending money belongs to ad men and, you know, that movie in the 60s. That's a 60s concept. So if you look at how do people discover songs today? You know, how does Taylor Swift get known? How does Justin Bieber happen? How did Michael Jackson happen? Did he have Flipkart's, you know, Lee Fixel to invest in him and spend marketing? How did we discover Angry Birds? Who told us to play Candy Crush? Did we see an ad in Times of India? So question is that. I think the point he is making is that if, and I would argue that essentially the real wealth in creating a product company out of India, mark gaming or not, is also going to be putting it out in a way that people get it and they automatically begin to use it and everything else happens on its own. I mean, you know, Vishal, um, we all use international products, right? We never, very few of us only do buy DC and nobody comes and sells it to us. Look at the sites we use, right? So what is your view panel on the concept of marketing without spending money to build a world-class product? That's my, that's my question. See, you have no money, let's assume. Assume, so... Uh I think if you don't have no money, then you, have, you should find a job. So that's a different problem. Sorry. So, I, I, okay, I'm just joking. So, so the question no, no, is... I, that I meant it as a, as, a, as a hypothesis that we all have no money, yes. yet we have to build a so world-class gaming uh, product. How do we do it? That's in, the question. In South Korea, I've seen some companies have started to do that. They use Kakao as a platform where people can exchange the virtual goods. So it has become a very trend because now they have a Wi-Fi connection in the subway. So they can actually, while traveling, they exchange the virtual items using the uh, different platform. So I think there is a evolution is also happening at a communication platform. Sure. Like what Facebook did for Zynga and now Kakao is doing for many gaming companies in South right. Korea. Right. So I think that's integrations of not just one system, it's an integration of so many systems happening. And I think your gamification idea also has one major important element that is the internet speed and the infrastructure. Got it. So infrastructure is evolving. I think marketing cost will come down if the infrastructure Very evolves. Very good point. So, I mean, we've all seen, right? I mean, Zapac spent how many hundred crores in putting their logos in toilets and buses in, uh, and Mani holdings Shagarwal, and now… where are you, my friend? They don't even use the name Zapac anymore, right? I mean, so marketing itself is not the solution for anything. Right. I think the challenge goes back to that if you do not have a great product, and according to me, a great product is not your own people rating your product on the App Store, but actual users uh, rating you four and four stars and above, Having awesome. at least a few hundred good reviews because that's what consumers read Perfect. before downloading a game Perfect. and not some marketing message. So I think you need to first get that and then marketing is only used to remain in the charts. So the way marketing we used well to said. do in the past was your game is in the top 10, top 50. If it is dropping slightly, you market it, bring it back. So how do you see, how do games maintain their lead? It's not just pure organic. That's where you strategically bring in marketing to keep Nice. Pushing a little up. That's how marketing, I'm giving you a very generic view, but there are a lot of strategies of this online, but that's really how marketing sure. is done in a gaming context. Ba Bhavin, uh, you know, you have a game that makes money. So you have the luxury of making money and spending money. And people lose money also. Yeah. So what do you think in terms of the future of, you know, is that like a, isn't that a, like a small cycle? You can't, you can't change your orbit just doing that, right? Um... Well, yes, you, you can't. I mean, but innovation, right? It's, it's right. about innovation at the end of the day. Gamification is one major innovation, right? So one of the things that we did 
uh, is uh, we said, okay, you know, we're marketing, we're going online, getting new players, but how can we get, get new players in a different way? So, nice. um, so Sachin, our, our marketing director, who's also in the audience, he said, let's do a BAF leaderboard. So you ask the people that you have to bring more friends. And you have a leaderboard, so people that bring the most friends, you give them something extra. And so that's kind of gamification where you're saying you just bring more people and we reward you for that, right? And that way you get more players because they play and then you, 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 you spread the word. So um, innovation is important, but I want to address one thing that, that, that you said about, about uh, um, you know, the, the quality of the game. Right? That's very important. I completely agree that if that quality of the game is not there, then, then you're not even going to be there in the top 500. And then only the qualities there will come the top 50, and then what Vishal said, that then you, you try to stay there by, by getting that extra bit, by, by strategizing and, and marketing and getting on top. Awesome. Thank you, guys. I think our time's up, and you know, we've hopefully delivered some value. Thank you very much.